Welcome back. And in our sports news, New Zealand have made it into the World Cup final against France after scrum half Piri Wipu kicked 12 points for New Zealand and recorded a 26 victory over Australia. Inside centre Ma Noni scored an early try for the All Blacks. He produced a brutally efficient, high tempo game plan to blow the Wallabies off the park and record their first win over their trans Tasman rivals. Fly half Aaron Cruden struck a first half drop goal with Weepu scoring two penalties. James O'Connor got a penalty and Quade Cooper scored a drop for Australia to mean New Zealand led 11 6 at half time. In the second half, Weepu added two further penalties to see New Zealand make their first World Cup final since 1995. Wales coach Warren Gatlin said Sam Warburton should not have been sent off and the referee's decision ruined the match as France won 9-8 in their Rugby World Cup semi-final on Saturday. Wales were forced to play more than three quarters of the match without Captain Warburton, who received a red card for a dangerous tackle on France winger Vincent Clerc in the 18th minute. It was only the second time a player has ever been sent off in the knockout stage of the Rugby World Cup. Get two quality teams and someone goes down to 14 men, well, the other team at this level should win the game comfortably. So, um, yeah, we missed a couple of shots of goal, we missed a conversion. Um, that gave us a chance, but in saying that, you, I can't be more proud of our guys in terms of what they achieved when they were down to 14 men after 17 minutes. It was absolutely courageous what they did. And Casey Stoner celebrated his 26th birthday by clinching the MotoGP world title with a fifth successive Australian Grand Prix victory at the Phillip Island Circuit on Sunday. Honda rider Stoner needed only a top six finish to steal his second championship after nearest rival George Lorenzo pulled out after losing the tip of a left finger when he crashed in the warm-up lap. Former champion Valentino Rossi crashed out after 13 laps. Simoncelli came in second and Andrea Dovzioso in third place. Well, I don't think uh, I can fit too many more things on this day. You know, it's my birthday, it's my fifth win in a row here, uh, my second World Championship, you know, my home Grand Prix, everything, you know, to, to win like this is just uh, really something special. In tennis, Andy Murray pummeled Japan's unseeded Kei Nishikori 6-3, 6-0 to reach the final of the Shanghai Masters on Saturday and will complete a stunning Asian hat-trick if he beats David Ferrer on Sunday. Nishikori, playing in his first Masters Series semi-final, lacked the firepower to trouble the British world number four. Murray was cool and composed in his demolition of unseeded Nishikori, taking complete command after breaking serve in the third game of the 56-minute evening encounter. Despite his defeat, the 21-year-old Nishikori can also look forward to a rise in the rankings from his current 47th spot and on Monday will become Japan's highest ranked player ever in the ATP rankings. Yeah, I played some great tennis the last few weeks but I'd love to finish it off uh, tomorrow. It's going to be very tough. David's had, had a very good tournament, beat some top players so I'm going to have to play a great match to try and beat him. And earlier in the day, comeback specialist David Ferrer sealed a place in the Shanghai Masters final after beating compatriot Feliciano Lopez 6-7, 6-3, 6-3. After levelling the match, Ferrer broke serve twice in the deciding set, wrapping up victory in 2 hours and 11 minutes. You know, when <laughs> you will do a, a final of Master Cup, it's for me it's the same, clay court or, or high court, tomorrow we'll try to do my best, I will fight a lot for to, to win my first Master, master 1000. In football, manager Roberto Mancini was pleased on Saturday after Manchester City went top of the Premier League after defeating Aston Villa 4-1 at their Etihad Stadium. However, the Italian also anticipated a tough week ahead when they face Villarreal in the Champions League and arch-rivals Manchester United in the English Premier League. Goals from Mario Balotelli, Adam Johnson, Vincent Company and James Milner moved City to 22 points from their eight matches. Two points clear of United. Mancini praised Balotelli for his goal and played down expectations that life at the top will be easy. City have now scored 27 goals in their opening eight matches, having won seven times and drawn once. We know that this week will be hard because uh, we played against Aston Villa. We should play 
against Villarreal and will be a, a crucial, a crucial game in Champions League for us. And after we have a derby, I think that uh, our mind is uh, very busy. And looking close to home, the UAE is gearing up for its biggest cricket season this year. Sri Lanka is set to face Pakistan next week in three tests, five one-day internationals and a 2020 international. This will be the first time the two countries meet since they last played in 2009, when Sri Lanka beat Pakistan 2-0. Both teams are coming to the Emirates with a squad full of new players. After the initial squad announced for the three tests, Sri Lanka will miss the services of Shaminda Eranga due to a shoulder injury. The Sri Lankan side has retained 13 members from the test squad that played in their 1-0 loss to Australia at home recently. And finally this evening, a chef in a Lake District hotel in the north of England has created the world's most expensive dessert at an eye-watering price of £22,000. Mark Guiber, the head chef at the Lindeth Howe Country House Hotel, said that his inspiration for the costly suite came from a Fabergé egg and the dessert is made out of high-quality chocolate. Aside from chocolate, the dessert's ingredients include gold champagne caviar and a two-carat diamond. But the pudding can only claim its place in the Guinness Book of World Records when a customer actually pays for it. Until then, New York Serendipity 3 restaurant will hang on to its record with its frozen auto chocolat. And with that, let's now take a look at the local and international weather forecast for tomorrow. And before we head out, here are the top stories again. The UAE commemorates World Food Day. The DHA launches breast cancer awareness campaign. And New Zealand beats Australia to make the World Cup final. Well, that brings us to the end of the bulletin. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can write to us at news at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04-367-2230. From the entire news team, it's goodbye for now.